Judge Bell, if you would like to introduce your team, and then I will read the next question. We'll get okay. started. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Rachel Bell, the presiding judge for General Sessions Court. I always like to start out um, indicating and letting you know that we are the People's Court, very, very focused on justice. And I'd like to start most of our meetings off talking to you about the three quotes that our courthouse, I believe, uh, tries to very much focus on so you'll understand why we're asking for some additional requests today. The first one is that the first duty of society is justice. Justice is what love looks like in public, and justice does not stop at the courthouse steps. Today, we have with me our court administrator, Warner Housel, to my right. And in the audience, we have Judge Linda Jones, Judge Allegra Walker, and Judge Casey Moreland, and Judge Michael Mondelli. We also have our court administrator assistant, Gina Fox, and one of our court officers, Frederick Kilpatrick, and now our new Veterans Court Mental Health Court Director, Mark Wilburn. Winslow. Thank you so much. So the questions that we're asking all of our departments, as stewards of taxpayer dollars, Metro Council has been charged with ensuring that the public funds are used in an effective, efficient manner, delivering maximum service to the citizens of Nashville. If your budget, and it does include an increase, if you could please present to the council how your additional funds will improve these services. Okay, and I would like to now defer this to our court administrator, Mr. Hassel. Yes, the uh, mayor's recommended budget uh, includes uh, several items, one of which includes uh, an improvement uh, for our night court system. Uh, the way that that, uh, that dollar amount is $219,600. Uh, the way the citizens of the community can benefit from that particular improvement is it includes two part-time commissioners that would be, be working during peak periods of when their arrest periods are the greatest during the course of a week or during a particular time of the day uh, during certain days of the week. Uh, and we would schedule those accordingly. Also, the commissioners do not have any full-time uh, or part-time staff support. Uh, the mayor's recommended budget includes two full-time staff that would uh, work uh, rotating shifts over a course of a week. Uh, th that recommendation came as a result of a, a study, the first study of its type in over 30 years of our night court system. So we, we've been operating with the same staffing level in night court uh, since the early 80s. Uh, another recommendation of the mayor's budget is two probation officer uh, positions that would specialize in supervising Hispanic offenders, including uh, helping to uh, support the new human trafficking uh, court or the Cherished Hearts docket uh, that, that was recently started at the General Sessions Court and, and administered by, by Judge Casey Moreland. Uh, we have a, a significant number of uh, offenders in our probation uh, department that are supervised uh, that, that are of Hispanic descent, and it would be very beneficial for us to have someone that was uh, fluent uh, in, in the his, uh, Spanish language to, to communicate properly uh, with the uh, offenders coming into probation. Uh, also, we have two, the mayor's recommended budget also includes two administrative uh, services officer positions that would improve the case management component uh, for the mental health court caseload. Uh, they, they have a, a significant caseload, and, and two, two positions would, would help them immensely to properly manage their, their docket. Is that all you have? We'll yes. Open the floor for questions. No. Now we're, we're going to take some time and ask the, the, <clears throat> the administration for additional requests. We're focusing those on three additional areas. We do want to thank the mayor for her recommendations um, that Warner Hassel has gone over, but there are a few more that we'd like for the council to consider. Those three requests are categorized, and I believe you received a, a sheet, hopefully um, all of you have it, where we're focused on number one, employees. Number two, we are focused on offender treatment and care. And number three, we're focused on professional development. General Sessions Court, 
is very focused on criminal justice reform, and it's a top priority of our administration, and specifically for the General Sessions Court Department. Our department has taken significant steps to prevent vulnerable communities from becoming just as involved and to provide initiatives that reduce the likelihood of recidivism. We're staying within the trends from the White House and justice reform. And with those courts, you've heard a lot about our specialty courts, our specialty courts, mental health court, veterans court, and drug court. We do thank the mayor for the two additional staff persons that um, have been recommended for mental health court. But while we focus now on our other additional requests for employees to continue with our efforts, we're asking for another case manager for a drug court. Drug court only has one employee, and with the one employee, they are handling a lot of our offenders, 125 or more offenders, and also starting the Cherish Hearts program, which we don't have any dedicated staff for that position. We thank the mayor for the two probation officers to help with bilingual assistance with probation, but drug court does need an additional staff member to help with the administration of that specialty court. So that is one specialty court that does have a need for an additional assistance. We're also asking for a program manager for our community court. The community court is in pilot stages, but in order to take it to another level, we would like for you to consider giving us an, an, an individual to help administer the, the program and help us to move forward with that idea for community justice and, and reform. We also have our night court study um, that we have uh, extensively talked about with several different people, where we'd like for our night courts to have the, the ability to have their their salary to be adjusted to match, which you'll see on page one under our priority of employees, to match the amount that is comparable to Shelby County and Knox County. In Shelby County, the judicial commissioners make $91,400, and in Knox County, $82,000. Here in Nashville, our actual range is between $73,000 and $92,000, just a little under where the comparable rate is across the state. So we're asking for a 10% increase in that area. When you look at also going to priority number two, priority number two is the offender treatment and care. The trends in the country right now are not for the offender themselves, as Judge Binkley stated earlier, to have other fees to take care of their treatment. It is um, the trend now that the general operating fund of the state or the local government to ensure the judiciary can fulfill its obligation by upholding the Constitution, protecting the individual and the rights of the citizens to actually be funded by the general operation of the city. To be funded by the general operation of the city, we're asking, if you, if you look on page two, we're asking for additional funds for drug testing, as well as housing and care for persons for certain referral needs, and that is a total amount of 185,000. Right now, we have a dedicated account that is tied to the arrest of an individual and the conviction. Those those convictions and the rest are down. They're down 48% from, from a three-year three year projection. So we're asking for funds to assist us in the offender and treatment and, told, and care for, for our offenders. The third area that we're asking you to focus on is professional development. As Judge Binkley stated earlier, it's very important that our judges and that our staff have the ability to Go to, go to classes and to training for professional development. There is no other job more important than education, and it is the foundation of our democracy, and by seizing on what's working and create, recreating those successes from one city, one community, one courtroom to the next, we can make it better for everyone here in the city of Nashville. Our judges and our staff need the ability to look for courses and educational opportunities to stay on course and the cutting edge across the, the country. So we're asking for an amount of 67,000 to assist us in that effort as well. As well as, um, I know that when I first became a judge, it was kind of funny. Some of my colleagues would say, we don't have enough money for pens, we don't have enough money for paper, we don't have enough money for our notepads, and that's very true. Um, a lot of us, I can go through a notepad, this is my notepad just for today. It was a brand new notepad, I probably have two sheets left from all the cases that we hear. We do have to take notes, my pens go out often, but having $600 for a whole um, chamber or for our four staff persons, two court officers, an assistant, and the judge, $600 per um, judge for staff for staff supplies is um, very low. Um, it's very, very hard for us to have what we need. So we're asking for some more supplies for that. That's not only just the case with our judges, it's also the case with our court administration and our traffic school educational supplies as well. So we're asking for a total of $57,900 to be considered. 
in that endeavor. And then also, um, as we continue to state over and over and over, not sure um, how you may feel about it, but there is a law that says that the um, the annual conference should be paid by the the general fund, and we're asking for um, you to consider following the statute that says it's the official duty of each member of the conference to attend the conference, which we have to do so, but each member shall be compensated by the member's actual expenses for attending the annual meeting, and those expenses shall be paid by the general fund from the county mayor. So we're asking for that to be um, covered as well. And that amount that we've asked for, it's a total of $146,900, because that's for our judicial commissioners too, and that's indicated by statute as well. So the total amount that we're asking for is $620,300. Now I'd like to open up for questions. Okay, council members. Council member Gilmore. Thank you, uh, Judge Bell. We appreciate your presentation. I had a couple of questions. Yes. Uh, is that okay, Vice uh, Chair? Is that okay yes. for me to ask a couple Absolutely. questions? Okay, so the, the first question um, I had started with was the one about, I wanted you just, just to kind of speak a little bit more about what the courts would be doing as it relates to the uh, trafficking. I want to hear more about how that person, in what capacity, is it the normal court that we we, we see? You just come in, you handle the cases, or is it a little bit more comprehensive than that? If you could speak okay. to that, and then I have another. And is this with the mayor's recommendation for the two probation officers, or you are talking about the case manager that we're asking for for drug court? No, to no, assist? no. I see. I was going to ask about just drug, um, drug court. No, okay. this is actually for. It says um, including human trafficking court. Okay, so that's two, the mayor's recommendation. Uh huh. Yeah. If you could just speak to that though, how that looks. Okay. Okay. okay, I would like to have Judge Moreland come to the podium um, to explain more about the human trafficking court, Cherish Hearts, but I can answer a little bit. The two probation officers that the um, mayor has recommended, it says two probation officer, one position to specialize in supervising Hispanic offenders, including the human trafficking court, which is Cherish Hearts. Right now, in our probation department, we have uh, maybe one or two individuals that can speak Spanish but aren't bilingual, but we're starting to have an influx of a number of individuals that are coming, offenders that are coming through our general sessions court that speak Spanish and we need to have a probation officer that can that can interpret and talk to them about their conditions and their, the order that they are signing for probation. But as far as cherished hearts and the human trafficking court, I would like for uh, Judge Moreland to come to the podium and express his concerns and let you know more about Cherish hearts. Judge Moreland, thank you. Counsel are you wanting to know what the program is? Is that what? Yes. Okay. Just because, yeah, uh, if you could just speak. Most to all that. the laws that we have uh, all deal with the perpetrator. And we have nothing, or have had nothing, that uh, has dealt with the victim of human trafficking. And we use uh, our Cherished Hearts program treats the victims of trafficking. We don't, we have nothing to do with the perpetrators. That's the DA's office will take care of that. But the DA's office, public defender's office, and, and, and our court was established uh, to help these, these victims. And what we do is we try to take every excuse away that they have to, uh, to go back out on the streets, to be trapped, continue to be trafficked, such as I don't, have, uh, I don't have a job. We help them get a job. I have a, uh, I have a drug problem. We have intensive uh, drug treatment that we can provide them. Um, you know, I, I don't have a car, I don't have a license. We give them bus passes, we help them get their license, things like that. We just try to take away every excuse they have, uh, including their, their addiction. A lot of them have tr bad, bad trauma problems. We have uh, uh, a psychologist that are specialized in trauma that treat them. All of this at no cost to the, vi to the victims. Okay, good. And so is the, a part of the request in here for to cover cherished hearts or no? Well, the mayor in the mayor's budget, I think we have part of a probation officer to help a little bit, but our program, you know, every bit's appreciated. We probably need a, a full-time position, uh, to be honest with you. So at this point, you have one to cover part-time? Well, in the mayor's budget, we do. I'm with we, you. I'm we just have to nothing follow. right now. Everybody that's doing, uh, that's operating in this program now, is doing it over and above their regular jobs. Got it. Volunteers. And, and so how much would it be for the a full time? I don't know that that's in the budget request. Right. Uh, but, yeah, we, we just we just But the one for the treatment court, 
which would also be helping with cherished hearts is the 60 something thousand, 65,000 dollar figure. Okay, all right then, thank you Judge Moreland. Okay, and then the second piece I was trying to follow with is um, you were saying something about for, I don't know if it was with the drug court, but you were saying arrests were down 48%, and I was trying to see, are these tied to the fees that you would normally receive to carry out certain duties? Is, right. Is, uh, are those two tied together? If you could just speak to that, and then I'll continue. Somewhere. They, okay. There was a dedicated account that was um, created several years ago for DUI arrests and DUI conviction. There's a certain amount of money that went into the DUI dedicated account. That money was to assist and help with drug treatment and care for our offenders. That money is d directly tied to our drug court, mental health court, and veterans court. Those funds are down now because the DUI arrests and the DUI of conviction rate is down. We have asked um, to, to add additional information to what Judge Moreland said. Having that additional staff person would help has nothing to do with the, the drug testing, but would help with cherished hearts as well, as he as he did state. And that amount, just to be clear, was forty nine thousand six hundred dollars that they're asking for an assistant to help with drug court that would also help with cherished hearts. But as far as um, the drug testing, the amount it is down forty eight percent. And so we're asking for a total amount of one hundred eighty five thousand dollars to be put from the general fund to assist in drug treatment court, mental health, drug testing, probation, drug screening, housing and care for persons for certain referrals, which is treatment court as well as mental health court. And if um, I have gone to that court with J uh, Judge Moreland, if he could speak to when these people, uh, I shouldn't say when these people, I don't mean it that way, but when the, the persons that attend uh, drug court are rehabilitated, that it is how much uh, of a savings, uh, Judge Moreland, I heard you cite the number one time, how much do we realize as a city? We have, uh, we, we have averaged 120 participants in drug court. Uh, over the last couple of years, and we're busting at the seams uh, as far as how many we can handle. Most all of our clients are special needs type individuals if they were in jail. All of our clients, if not for our program, would be in jail. 120, that's $5.2 million a year just in direct incarceration cost savings to the city. Okay. And our total budget for drug court is only $62,000. Okay. So uh, thank you so much for that, Judge Moreland. And I was able to attend that uh, that uh, ceremony, and it was a beautiful ceremony because the people did not look like, the, the participants did not look like the same people that they did after they had gone through the court. And it was also Council Mem uh, Member Johnson was there, and I think it was Council Member Pulley and some other people as well that were there. And it was very touching. And if we can say five point two million versus 185,000, I would request that this would be in the budget. I mean, I think it's, so Add I'll, it I'll fill it on, on my yeah, wish on list. list. I will make that recommendation okay. for you. And then I have a last question, and it's a legal question. So we're gonna use our, our wonderful Esquire over there, Mr. Um, Jameson. So um, the last piece I wanted to see about was the, um, continuing education for judges judges pursuant to the TCA statute of 173204 and to see how that works if we haven't been doing it all this time and we what I mean what what are the legal um, ramifications thank you so much um, vice chair I appreciate you uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak following uh, judge bell and uh, my good friend Moore Hassel. Um, by law, attorneys in Tennessee are required to have 18 hours of continuing legal education per year, um, three hours of ethics included. At many uh, branches of government where attorneys work, that's part of the benefits package. Um, and the council office pays my CLE requirements every year. So a, a similar requirement by the judges, not only being statutorily required, but a very typical professional benefit for judges within the public sector um, I can't recommend to you specific budgetary items, but this would be a typical provision within other municipalities. Okay, so my follow-up question, though, she, she was saying that it's, it's actually written into the law that we're supposed to pay for it. There is a Tennessee code that requires it to be paid by. Now, we are a metropolitan government, so the reference to the county mayor's general fund is a slight difference, but okay. I would submit that the Because we're the saying we're consolidated and we don't have to? 
because we're consolidated? Is that what we're? That is correct. But <laughs> I, but I think the intent of the statute is clear that it should come from the general fund of the of the county budget. Okay, and then um, I have one more question. So, do we pay? Do you know we pay for the fees for our attorneys that we have that represent the city? Our city attorneys. Do we? I, I would imagine that we do provide, I don't know this to be a fact, but I would assume that we do provide for the continuing legal education fees for the Metro legal attorneys, but I will verify that and get back to you. Okay, if you could verify uh, that for me. All right then, thank you so much, uh, Judge Bill. I'm definitely advocating for um, the one, was it 185 for the drug court? Because I think it has a large return when we think about $5.2 million that we are uh, saving. And then if we can get more information on whether we're paying for our other attorneys uh, for that continual legal education, I will request, depending on if we do it as a, as for our uh, city lawyers. Could I um, just add a little bit, Council Member Gilmore? Uh, thank you for making the request for the 185,000. I just want to be clear, that money is for treatment for all of our offenders within drug court, mental health court, and veterans court. What is very important is that drug court does get an additional staff member to continue along those efforts to ensure that the $5.2 million are saved. And they're asking for an additional staff person, which is only a budgetary item of $49,600. If um, you would consider um, adding that to your one person handling 125 people and then adding an additional court with no staff is really a uh, I will, I will make that request as well. Just know that Thank a you. lot of other council members will have requests and we're gonna have to work on them, so. Okay. But I will make that re request as well because I, I do think it's important uh, that we realize those savings as a city and not only that it transforms uh, people's lives. So I think it's very helpful. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Gilmore. Council Member Pulley. Thank you, Judge Bell, and, and thank you, Chairperson, Madam Chairperson. Uh, not being the numbers person that my uh, esteemed colleague, Chairman Weiner, is, let me, are these all, this $620,000, that's not all over and above what the mayor has uh, given you, is it? Yes, it is. It is? Yes, Every it is. bit of it is more than so. It's not, uh, okay, all right, that answers my question. Uh, and I also might note that it's really nice to see you and Mr. Jamison speaking from the same stage. Yes, we've, we're really good friends, actually. I know you are, so <laughs> that's great. Well, thank you very much. That answers my questions. Thank you. Council Member Hart. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, um, my question is regarding the mental health court. Um, we spoke earlier this week with uh, Metro General in regards to possibly having a mental health uh, ward that could uh, possibly drive revenue. And the $75,000 that you have here, I'm just wondering if it could be utilized to serve as a, a catalyst to, to get something started or some matching funds or do I need to add something to a wish list or can I, or what can I do to try to help move forward to, to making sure that we serve this population of people as well as, um, as well as assist Metro General in, in getting uh, revenue started. I, I know that a lot of uh, criminal activity uh, is, is misappropriated um, for mental health issues. I, I, I don't know if that's the right word, um, but, but it, it's, it's more a diagnosis of mental health than not just criminal activity behavior. I think at this point you need to put on your wish list from the mental health court side funds that would facilitate that as well as on the hospital authority side funds that would help that ongoing. Realizing though that we have to add into the capital improvements budget funds to build out that eighth floor at the hospital authority, I mean at the hospital. Are there any others in the queue? No. Anybody else wish to be recognized? Okay, with that, we will conclude. Larry? All right. Council Member Hager. I'm sorry. I saw you waving your arms. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. I thought I had it on. I apologize. No, you didn't. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Judge Bell, for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, one question I had, and of course, I go to court a lot. I don't know how many probation officers each court has 
are designated for each court. So when we talk about mental health court, veterans court, drug court, is there a way that you can break down to me how many officers or probation officers we have per court? Is that possible to do that? Yes, it is. Okay. And if you can provide that to me, and the reason I'm asking that is because uh, my brother-in-law used to be assistant director of the Department of Corrections. And when we talk about the cost of incarceration, I remember when CCA tried to come in and we're gonna try to outbid the state on the cost of incarceration. And I have clients that go to the drug court and then they go to the halfway houses and it's probably one of the most successful programs there is because the cost of incarceration is enormous. And I wanna make sure that uh, there is you know, a balance of all these different courts that we have as far as having enough staff to staff each one of them. And also having a older son that has special needs and intellectually disabled, I'm always concerned about the mental health court. And I wanna make sure that it's fully uh, fully staffed to take care of these people because most of them uh, do not have the ability to know what they've done to begin with and uh, I wanna make sure they're taken care of. Now, as to the night court commissioners, I understand that they're making less than Shelby County and Knox County, is that correct? That's correct. And that's not in this proposed budget at this time, correct? It is. Not, not in the mayor's recommended. No, not, not in the, in the I'm sorry. mayor's okay. recommendation. So we're proposing 10% for them. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. And that's based upon the night court study recommendations. Um, we had a, a study that was done. It took How many years was it? How many years was it study? About a year? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So your study we just received, and we're just okay. asking you to comply right. with that. And and I, I expressed sentiments with Councilwoman Gilmore about the drug court, and we'll try to get some funding for that. I want to go into the program coordinator for the community court. I know you've already done this once or twice. Is this somebody that's going to be a full-time position? Is that correct? Yes, it is uh, our hope. We're still what, in pilot stage right now, but having okay. any, a staff person would really help us take it. And what what is the amount you're requesting for that? We're requesting $71,200. So the salary is $49,649 plus benefits. And then the drug testing, um, that's some extra expense. Is that something we hadn't been funding before? Is that correct? Well, that is the one where there's a, a specialized dedicated account where an offender that has a DUI arrest or DUI conviction has an additional charge that's added to their court costs and fines, and a certain portion of that goes to the dedicated account. Because DUI convictions and arrests are, are reduced now or are, are down, down 48% actually over the last three years, right. that money has, has dwindled down to a little bit. We, we barely have enough to do the drug testing for mental health court, veterans court, drug court and the housing and care for the offenders as well. So that's the amount we were asking for, 185000 All right. And then we've outsourced the, uh, the SCRAM units and those type of units now. Are they outsourced or are we still doing those with Ken Johnson? No, they're, they're outsourced. They're outsourced now? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you, Council Member Hager. Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, Judge Bell, you mentioned the community court that's in pilot. Can you just, in two sentences, what, what is that community court? Okay, the community court, it will take me probably longer than two sentences, but it's been focused on helping all of the individuals that come before our courts so that they can re hopefully reduce. Um, we're trying to make sure that we reduce the recidivism rates and also assisting them in, in helping the community. For example, we cr we've only had the docket on Saturdays. So if an individual comes to our Citation 1A docket, we create a specialized ghost docket on Saturday where they arrive at a location at 8 o'clock. We'll do some community service work, whatever that is, paint retaining walls, get graffiti off of um, different um, bridges. We'll clean up, litter pick up. We um, now are working with a community garden and some other things that we're going to be doing to assist our, our, our to assist our city and the offenders. When they get done doing that work, they come back, I sign off on it, so at that time they don't have to come back to court on Monday or Tuesday to show proof that they've com completed their community service. The court case is dismissed because usually those are under advisement or agreed orders. So it's, it's reducing the um, 
the arrest rate. It's helping individuals re-enter back into the community, hopefully quicker and not having to come back to court and also assisting the community, seeing that you know it's community, community focused. So then are these parolees who've had kind of an additional minor offense or right now we've when been you focusing. say recidivism, you mean there's a previous charge? In some instances, there are previous charges and in some there aren't. So this is a, a preventive and diversionary focused court. Preventive, diversionary, okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else in the queue? Yes, Council Member Mendez. Thank you. I just wanted to um, briefly, it borders on a congratulation, but there's a budget issue, so I'll make it a budget thing. Um, I uh, appreciate the effort of the General Sessions Court in over the last several years of moving toward um, how to rehabilitate people and, and, uh, and track people out of the system rather than just working on incarcerating them. And uh, the budget point would be that um, I would encourage uh, uh, y'all continuing to challenge yourself every year to, to push that farther and farther, because I, I do think that it does, um, uh, aside from saving money for taxpayers in the long run, um, it's, it's the right thing to do. Um, and so appreciate that effort and uh, like you guys to keep it up. Thank you. So will you, will you recommend all of what we're asking for? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a lawyer answer. <laughs> I'll take it under consideration. Okay, thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you for your comments as well. Seeing no one else in the queue, we are completed with this hearing, and we thank you for being with us. Thank you as well. Thank you.